Hello and welcome to Misty Quest Channel. That scorching summer of 1941 we tell a really hot story. Our stage is in the Soviet Union, where the lovely and pathetic artist, movie critic, and commander of the Soviet Western Front, Senior General Pavlov, was sent to the gallows of history and in a grim way, the entire Soviet Western Front basically went up in smoke. Can't stand to watch didn't expect the situation to be so bad. The Battle of Minsk also became the Germans' big cleanup. They are just like a scrap recycling company, picking up all kinds of weapons and equipment all over the place. Germans, especially waste utilization, the Soviet Union, the British Army, the French Army, as long as it is broken, take over to repair screw and then brush a black cross as a new. Even cannot go to the front line, take to support the second line of infantry, also have no harm. If you can't, you can give them to the SS for scrap, right? Even killing Jews can be used for that. The Soviet comrades are a little less interesting. Tanks, not to mention destroyed, had a little problem, and many Soviet armorers just left them alone. Sometimes they didn't even know how to use their toolboxes to overhaul their tanks. Coupled with the Soviet Union, that set of poor mechanical processing technology, ah, you can imagine this kind of equipment. Non-combat losses are how outrageous. Tracks off will not be connected. The tank is missing a wheel directly lost, but the Germans' tanks broken into half. The front bumper and trunk are gone. They can still be repaired and continue to use. So, the Germans did not give the Soviet comrades a chance to take a break. Guderians and Holtz battle groups have advanced to the Dnieper, Barakina, and western Dvina rivers, heading straight for Smolensk the big city in the western part of the USSR, which is also known as the gateway to Moscow. Speaking of Smolensk, it's literally a central hub. As we look at the map, Białystok became part of Poland long after the war. From Białystok to Minsk is 300 kilometers, from Minsk to Smolensk 300 kilometers, and from Smolensk to Moscow only 370 kilometers. It's literally the last fuse in Moscow and that's still east-west. To the north, it's a straight shot to Leningrad, and to the south, it's easy access to the important Ukrainian cities of Kiev and Kharkov. Smolensk's geographic location in the USSR was literally the location of Silicon Valley, a collection of global high technology. Topographically, Smolensk straddles the Dnieper River and is a crucial new industrial zone for the USSR, and the city also has a railroad connecting Minsk and Moscow, which is literally the transportation lifeline of the Western USSR. Such places have traditionally been the focus of military rivalry. In 1812, Napoleon did battle in this very place against the famous Russian general, Marshal Barclay de Tolly. Stalin's hometown, the Russian army's first fierce general, Duke Bagrakian, also personally led the Russian army here to give Napoleon a good lesson. In the end, it took Napoleon a lot of effort to take the place, and only after the Russian army retreated of its own accord. This is our brothers in the Soviet Union, faced with such a key place as Smolensk. Alas, this is really big trouble. At the beginning of July 1941, the situation on the Soviet side was, to put it mildly, a messy one. The commander-in-chief of the Western Front at that time was Field Marshal Temushenko, an old man who could be summarized in one word. Bald. First of all, he had a big bald head as bald as a monk, which was so bright in the photo that nine dots on his head became the symbol of a Chinese monk. Besides, he was a bare-bones commander. Once Field Marshal Temushenko took office, the Western Front was basically in ruins, especially at the senior officer level in the face of the mess left by Pavlov. Pavlov was killed the top brass under his command directly committed suicide, shot a bunch of a total of more than 30 high-ranking officers, intelligence officers, no one can escape. So when Temushenko took office, even the staff was in tatters, and he had to consult the British even to understand the German army numbers. It was a situation that really took more than a few shots of vodka to digest. Ostensibly, four group armies, but in reality, in addition to the number, most divisional units were even only 10 to 30 percent of their strength, with more than 200 tanks left and less than 400 airplanes. 
This is simply a skillful woman who cannot cook without rice. The German high command was confident about taking Smolensk. Before the news of victory came from the German radio, the whole of Germany from top to bottom filled with the atmosphere of victory. The aroma of beer filled the streets of Germany. Hitler's face easy to talk and laugh. The strong enemy has been ashes. The Germans all smiles. Hitler a few days ago still harping on the German army's encirclement is not perfect, like not the hamburger rifen patty and cheese sandwich, a heated patty and cheese are missed. Now it was full of praise for the German soldiers, and everyone was to receive the Iron Cross which was more than a Friday sale, one hundred for a dollar, a tearful but inwardly joyful toss. When having a war conference, Hitler was even more gleeful, telling the senior generals, brothers, I was right in my prediction, wasn't I? This house of the Soviet Union is now about to fall. Their air force and tanks were KO'd by us at the beginning. What other cards can they have now? Be patient. For a few more days, when we win, I'll invite everyone to Moscow for beet soup, Russian barbecue, vodka, big bread of your choice, and a Russian nesting doll for each of you. Oops, that's got to roll over and roll over. It's so cheerful. But, but that German is really a man of culture. Uh, he fought the country as actually the Soviet Union. Has always been a lack of good people, lack of morality, but not a lack of resources. Human resources, material resources, as long as their war machine is activated, the potential for explosion is simply terrifying. Just when the Germans were getting carried away, hundreds of thousands of Soviet reserves suddenly jumped out. Marshal Temushinko, who was previously only a bald, bareheaded commander, at this moment became an instant tycoon. It turned out that the 21st and 22nd Army groups, which had been summoned by the Supreme Command, went straight to the Smolensko front, paired with the 19th and 20th Army groups, which were on standby in the Smolensko area. As soon as the chickpeas hit the ground, four more army groups quietly sprang up. Even more ruthlessly, the newly formed 24th and 28th group armies were also ready to join the battle for Smolensko at any time. My goodness, this is the terrible mobilization ability of the Soviet woolly bear. At this point, the Germans have no idea that these guys exist, and still think that the Soviet Union is just like the British and French armies. I have eliminated four group armies. Why don't you guys surrender quickly? For the information east of the Dnieper River, the German army understood only from the mouth of some captured Soviet generals. These men told the Germans that there were no heavy groups on the other side of the river. That's right, because they really didn't know before they were captured. This was not a lie or a deception. At this moment, Temushinko was holding seven army groups 6,000 tanks and tens of thousands of artillery pieces under his command. This bald man danced the samba on the road. When Stalin saw off this drinking buddy, he warmly shook his hand and said, Semyon, that's the name of Temushinko, Semyon, Konstantinovich Temushinko. This must be called the full name. We are good brothers, Semyon. Looking at this situation, this huge configuration, Defeating that bad boy little wolf dog and Guderian absolutely no problem. Temushinko was ecstatic at the moment. Boss, don't tell me. Not only did he defeat that bad boy, I could have captured him and licked your ass. Stalin was satisfied and immediately felt his buttocks warm happy mustache to the sky to see this close friend run to the front. When it comes to friendship, these two men really formed a deep brotherhood. Their relationship can be traced back to the Charlemagne front. In 1920, now many people may not know Charlemagne, but in 1925, Charlemagne has a new name, Stalingrad, which is the place where Stalin became famous. Temushinko was a hardcore drinking buddy in Stalingrad at the time, serving under Bujuni. Stalin was murderous in the purges, but took good care of officers who came from the cavalry. Temushinko and Zhukov, for example, were beneficiaries, and for the defense of Smolensk. This time Stalin gave his entire fortune to this hardcore brother. And this bald marshal, confident, 
vowed to live up to the trust of his old leader. Valiantly, with the feeling of licking the boss's ass, he went to the front to capture that bad boy Guderian. Thus, in the Dnieper River in the middle of summer, the two torrents of iron armor smoldered with rolling black smoke and collided into each other in a flash like dry wood. Earlier, before the Battle of Minsk was over, Guderian and Holt's armored clusters were ready to approach Smolensk. Both armies were caught off guard, and in the Smolensk area, the two sides met unexpectedly and sparks flew. Why do you call it an unplanned encounter? On the German side, Guderian and Holt were almost stunned. Where did these hairy beers come from? Where did these hairy beers come from? Didn't they say they were wipe it out? Did they come out of hell? Didn't intelligence say there were no Soviet troops east of the Dnieper? Field Marshal Temushinko was also confused. How did the German panzers get here so fast? Weren't they in Minsk, 300 kilometers away, on a high-speed railroad? It can be said that the sudden appearance of the Soviets did catch the Germans off guard. On July 1st, Guderian's advanced troops were surprisingly counterattacked by the Soviets consisting of tank divisions and motorized infantry divisions. Moreover, the German army also saw a kind of tanks never seen before, that is, the Soviet Union has just been equipped with the T-34 medium tanks, in fact, is a tractor turf with a thickened machine gun tank tower top. The Soviet T-34 tanks caused Germany a lot of trouble. Germany's number three tanks in the face of T-34 tanks almost helpless, hastily rushed to reinforce the tanks of the German 17th Panzer Division. On the T-34 is also no help. Let this steel monster rampage. Intelligence shows that there was a T-34 only 1.5 kilometers from the main German position before a German cannon hit the rear and then stopped. 34 tanks debut of the German armored forces feel very alarmed. Armored commanders have to military research and development department shouted to them to hurry up some ideas. The Mao Xiong this time but put a satellite and Guderian is more direct. He felt that the T-34 tanks should be copied directly. This is the best way to get rid of the German tank force quickly. It is under such pressure, the German army quickly launched the Leopard, Tiger these star tanks. In the past, it was enough to fight Poland and France with the number three tank. And tanks like the number four and number five came later. The Soviet side of course happy, Hitler mustache. This is just the beginning, appetizers and cold cuts. The main meal is still to come. July 3rd, the main course is finally served. The sun has just risen two Soviet mechanized army 2,000 tanks in the elite of the elite. The Moscow Motorized Infantry Division and the two infantry corps, with the classic Ula sound rang from the depths of the forest, with the Germans were at a loss. Not to mention the fact that compared to the British and French forces on the Western Front, we had just wiped out a Soviet army of hundreds of thousands of men, not to mention the fact that we had just annihilated a Soviet army of hundreds of thousands of men. What's going on here? There are so many people here again. Are the woolly bears frogs? Is the Mao bear a frog that lays eggs? At the forefront of contact with this wave of Soviet troops is the 18th Panzer Division of the Guderian Cluster. In the face of the powerful Soviet offensive, the German 18th Panzer Division quickly made the judgment that the confrontation was outmatched in strength and retreated in a methodical and orderly manner. At this point, it really showed what well-trained means. This unit, with 130 tanks of three and the Soviet tanks of more than 10 times the attack, flexible and maneuverable, easy to cope with, and orderly, withdrew to their own lines. The Soviets did not take advantage of this contact, and in the face of it, even a battlefield fiend like Guderian seemed cautious. In reporting to his superiors, he made it clear that the attack was blocked and requested that infantry reinforcements be sent as soon as possible. At the same time, the main forces of the German 4th and 9th Armies were busy cleaning up the battlefield of Minsk, which was not an easy task. It took a while to catch a pig, and it was very tricky to catch a pig, not to mention the hundreds of thousands of armed Russian bears. And it's true that some Soviet troops fought quite well, and it's true that some of the Russian units fought quite well, like the defense of the Brest Fortress 
and there were some fierce battles in the Biawistok encirclement. Basically, by the time the Minsk area was cleared, it was the end of July, which delayed the German infantry advance considerably. Guderian, no matter how formidable and forward-looking he was, found himself in too much of a hurry for his infantry to keep up, so in the face of a sudden, heavy Russian counterattack, he finally tasted the bitter fruits of this adventurous advance. At this point, it was up to the Russians to seize this rare opportunity to ride out the storm and extend the gains. However, the result was a big surprise. The Russian army of Timochenko performance some waste not only did not seize the opportunity, but also into a bitter battle. In the bloody battle in early July, Russia lost nearly 500 tanks, almost 25% of the total number of tanks. It is important to realize that this is only against the German vanguard, although there is a super sick new weapon T-34. But the Germans are also prepared. They have an invincible weapon, 88mm anti-aircraft guns, horizontally placed against the tanks, with excellent results. Considering that the main gun of the T-34 tanks was only 76 mm caliber, while the German anti-aircraft guns were 88 meter, but the Russians didn't seem too concerned about this huge difference in battle damage. This Russian counteroffensive was commanded by Lieutenant General Yerlevi Andreevich Yeryomenko, the new deputy commander of the Western Front who, after discovering the gap between the German Holt Group and the Guderian Cluster, commanded the remaining 2,500 tanks in a frantic attack on a small town called Sino, in an attempt to cut off the two German armored clusters. This time, however, the Russian army was surprised to find that five subsequent German armored divisions had already arrived. At this time, the German army already had more than 700 tanks. The number is twice as bad. But through the previously mentioned German 18th Panzer Division's performance, we can see that the Russian army recruit's training level is relatively low. While the German army's armored division configuration is very reasonable, a tank brigade under the jurisdiction of a panzer division and a motorized infantry brigade, the synergy between infantry and tanks. The Russian tank divisions, on the other hand, were relatively pure tanks, lacking infantry support. As a result, in the battle on July 6th, the Germans took advantage of the terrain and the firepower of their powerful 88mm guns, causing the Russians to suffer heavy losses. In one day alone, the Russians lost nearly 400 tanks and over 10,000 casualties, while German losses were almost negligible. After this battle, the Russian army's Timoshenko big bald cry, only to retreat back to recuperate. However, facing such a vicious German army, especially that big wolf dog Guderian, how could he allow the Russian army to rest easily? After successfully pulling back the game, he immediately organized his troops and urgently prepared to forcibly cross the Dnieper River and together with Holt's iron pincers, opened their bloody mouths and headed straight for Smolensk, attempting to once again replicate the success of Minsk and give the Russians another big encirclement. At the moment, Guderian and Hot were waiting for the follow-on infantry corps to arrive in time to coordinate their efforts. However, when it came to coordinating the infantry, the next episode was predictable. Guderian and Field Marshal Klug, commander of the 4th Army Group, began to argue again. July 9th, full of anger, Kruger specially flew from Biawisok to Guderian's headquarters, said furiously, You see, what did I say? Do not listen to me. Suffered a loss. Let you just focus on the front. You rush to find death. You see, let the Russian bear bite it. Biochemical crisis did not, uh. Told you so, you don't listen. Guderian responds. Don't be sarcastic here. It's all because your infantrymen are dragging their feet. You're like an old money grubber, delaying the time for a few prisoners and a few broken guns for the spoils of war. Hurry up and let them come up and meet me. We'll make another super burger. Kruger scoffed. Eating another burger when you haven't finished one, aren't you afraid of holding out? At this point, Guderian subtly mentioned Hitler. Wasn't it the Fuhrer who gave you the title of Field Marshal? Wasn't it also based on the war service of your subordinates? Are you owling me? Remember before Hitler boss told us before winter comes to occupy Moscow we cannot even have winter clothes. To the winter, Moscow to take down. We will not have the face to go back. We'll be here as a snowman. 
that fork on your shoulder is the two scepter, when the time comes to become a fork of fork grass. What's more, it's not like the Russian Air Force doesn't have anything to do, we have so many tanks parked there. That's for people to drop bombs for practice. Ah, that's a living target. You have to move quickly. Words Kruger can only hate to stop, helpless. In order for the scepter on his shoulder not to disappear anymore, he had to draw infantry and quickly follow up with the armored cluster in front of him. In this way, everything is ready, just to give the order. On July 10th, Guderian's army forcibly crossed the Dnieper River, and according to the plan, Centered on Smolensk, Guderian's second armored cluster detoured from the south to encircle the Russian 13th and 20th Army groups, while Holt departed from the north and plunged straight into the flank of the 22nd Army group north of the Russian line. On the map, these two can be described as the Corpus movement warfare played to the fullest, rigid and flexible, open and close in an orderly manner. Movement is dispersed, static is coordinated although there are many variations, but the tactical reasoning is always the same. At this time the Russian army is completely confused, the brain seems to stop running, this is not right, obviously we are counterattack, right? How come the Germans counterattacked again? However, this is the cold and cruel reality with great irony. The famous British war historian Riddle Hart commented, the Germans have regained a lost opportunity, thanks to Guderian's boldness. What awaited the Russians next was a tragedy too sad to tell. Well, that's all for today. We'll see you next time.